test, 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 test. Test, 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 test. Test, test, test. Man, I made such a mistake last episode, I'm gonna tell you. Test, 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 test. Give me a second, I'm, I'm making sure everything good. Test, 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 test. Test, 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 test. All right. Welcome to a live installment of Telem Alejandro, your number one place for sports, cars, video games, and fitness. You a man, you're here. TA drinkers, my bad. Last episode, totally forgot to plug in my mic. It's the second time this happened. The audio is so bad. I am sorry. Can't redo it though. <laughs> so it is what it is. Lower your volume on that last one. Let's get up in this one. We got the Denver Nuggets losing to the LA Clippers 96 to 85, which now makes this series three games to one. We're about to go over the highlights, but check this out. Michael Porter Jr. said something after the game. And I was doing my homework. I was watching the post game. Michael Porter Jr. said. Because he was asked the question, basically, what happened in the second half compared to the first half? I'm assuming, obviously, in the first half, the Nuggets played better than the second half. And basically, Porter Jr. was like, oh, nah, the Clippers didn't do anything differently. I just didn't get the ball enough. I was like, whoa, he said that? Because if a player, go move, Jokic, if a player says, oh, no, the other team didn't do anything crazy as far as like slowing us down da, da, da. but I didn't get the ball enough that basically means he's saying something either about the coach or he's saying something about the star players Jamal Murray and Nikola Jokic who are getting the ball you feel me good move Kawhi nice post move so I thought that was very telling I do think he has a point but you know that's usually something that's not said it looks bad. Good shot, Jokic. It looks bad when a player is going to a press conference and talking about stuff that usually they talk about in the locker room. You feel me? He either threw the coach under the bus or he threw his star teammates under the bus. And I think he threw the coach under the bus, to be honest. I think he threw the coach under the bus because, he, because the follow-up question by the next reporter was basically, oh, well, what can you do to change that? Do you need to be more assertive? Do you need to ask for the ball more? Blah, 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 blah. And basically, Michael Porter Jr. was like, ah, oh, good dunk, Zuba. Michael Porter Jr. was like, oh, I mean, it's really up to the coaches upon who's, who gets touches, X, Y, Z, blah, 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 blah. So, yeah, he's, he's, Michael Porter Jr. has called his coach out. Like, the Nuggets definitely losing this series, but I'm just calling like I see it. Michael Porter Jr. just was talking trash about his coach. Straight up. Good move. Good move, Porter Jr. And, and hold on. Let me pull up the numbers. Because um, when I was looking at these numbers, I noticed only two people shot double-digit shots. And that's when I was like, oh, snap, he has a point. Not only that, out of your five starters, two of them have single-digit points. One of them barely got double digits with 10 points. Porter Jr. played the fourth most minutes of any player on the Nuggets. He came off the bench. He had the second most shot attempts. I'm sorry, the third most shot attempts behind the two stars, Nikola Jokic and Jamal Murray. Basically what Michael Porter... Junior was alluding to, and he's totally correct about this, because of how how much goon defense the Clippers play, right? You can't be predictable. And he's 100% right. You can't be predictable. You can't two-man game the Clippers. And, it, and this is something that the Lakers will have to face. Because I expect the Lakers to beat the Rockets. Good move, Porter Jr. The... AD, there's no answer for, that the Clippers have. The Clippers will get destroyed by AD. No doubt about it. LeBron, they have players they feel like they can match up with LeBron. Okay? Now, here's the thing. Um, even though there's no answer for, for AD against the Clippers, even though LeBron's the best player in the league, 
and he might be the best player ever. Danny Green still is going to have to hit some shots for the Lakers to beat the Clippers. Kyle Kuzma is still going to have to come off the bench and produce offensively to beat the Clippers. Kentavious Cole Pope is going to have to shoot some threes as well as Danny Green to beat the Clippers. Rajon Rondo is going to have to play how he did in Game 3 against the Rockets to beat the Clippers. Like, everybody's going to have to produce, you understand, because of the type of defensive, the stout defensive team that the Clippers are. If you're predictable, they'll carve you up. They'll carve you up. Paul George is an elite goon defender. Kawizi Manizi Kawhi Leonard is an elite goon defender. The Chirac Savage, Patrick Beverly, is an elite goon defender. Those are three elite goon defenders on the wing. Combined with, ah, oh, I see you, Trez. Good dunk. Combined with the fact that they play good team defense. Now, if you watched the Boston Celtics back when they had Garnett, Ray Allen, Pierce. Pierce wasn't like a lockdown defender. Neither was Ray Allen. But they played good team defense. Obviously, it was anchored by Garnett. And Perkins was playing a lot of defense for that team, too. But... They played good team defense. Also, when you look at the good move, Kawhi, good pump faking in the finish. The, I, be, I believe the 2004 Detroit Pistons, and just that, that era alone, the 05 Pistons, 06 Pistons, Chauncey Billups, Tayshawn Prince, Rip Hamilton, the, the Wallace brothers, Big Ben, baby, and Rashid. That Rashid was my man. He's a thug. I love Rashid Wallace. The, um, yeah, Ben was a elite rim protector. And Rashid was solid on defense. But Billups wasn't no lockdown defender individually. Neither was Rip Hamilton. And Tayshaun Prince was a solid defender. But again, they weren't elite lockdown goons. You understand what I'm saying? But as a unit, collectively, they played great goon team defense. So that's that's how I look at the Clippers. They have three. First of all, they have three elite wing defenders. Good shot, Porter Jr., which is, you know, something that a lot of teams do not have. But then combined with the fact that the other two players that they play along with those three guys tend to support them defensively. You can't just think you're going to go out there and cook with Jokic and Murray. And, and then on top of that, good shot. Good shot, Morris Twin. On top of that, I feel like the Nuggets are deep. That's actually why I picked them to beat Utah in, in the first round. I feel like the Nuggets were deeper than Utah. And I also felt like Utah had some injuries. They started off that series without Michael Conley Jr. That hurt them. And they also were missing my man's Boban. Oh, I see you, Grant. They were, um, um, the Utah Jazz was also missing a 20-point score in Boban Bogdanovich. So that's why I picked the Nuggets to win. And the Jazz fall back. They almost won that series. But me knowing how deep the Nuggets are, it doesn't make any sense that only Jokic and Murray are getting double-digit shot attempts. I think Gary Harris is not where he needs to be. He missed a lot. He, he missed a lot of time. He came into the bubble late. You know, he's behind. You feel me? It's like a student who missed, like, the first month of school. You behind, my G. You feel me? And um, I do think Porter Jr. is there. He's there to be that third dude. The same way how the Lakers are going to need a third dude, like a Kuzma to step up, like their role players. Good pass, Kawhi. Wow, good shot, Morris Twin. Nuggets got to share that ball a little bit more. But I, I'm not so sure it's, it's the players ball hogging Murray and Jokic. It might be Coach Malone. Coach Malone is only calling plays for them. And then you look at last game, Jamal Murray struggled. Because those three elite goon defenders, oh yeah, let's just load up on Murray. Put the pressure on Jokic to cook. Not that Jokic can't cook, but if we have a goon defender putting the pressure on Murray, it's putting pressure on Jokic to basically score a gazillion points to win the game. You understand? It's like it's like the same thing. Oh, good pass. Ah, it's like the same thing the Lakers are doing to the Rockets. You double hard and you're now putting pressure on Westbrook to score everything. And he he simply can't. He doesn't have a, a consistent jump shot. And he's behind. The same way how Gary Harris is behind. Westbrook missed a lot of time. He had the coronavirus. He missed a lot of time. He came late to the bubble. Good floater, boy. Floater, gang. And he had a quad injury. So it's like, damn. Tough luck for the Rockets, but... Good shot. They were banking when they got rid of the Rockets. When the Rockets got rid of their big man, they were banking on West Breezy to go crazy on the inside. And he was doing that before the NBA season got suspended, but he's not there right now. It's tough to watch. So for the Nuggets, definitely, I think, I think they're going to have to get Porter Jr. more burned. He also, honestly, just from what I've seen, good move, Lou Will. God damn, good score, good bucket. 
the the Clippers have not really had an answer for Porter Jr. To be honest, good dunk. Montrez was banging this game, boy. The Clippers have not had an answer for Porter Jr. He's six nine, six ten. He told it in George. He told it in Beverly. He told it in Kawhi. Oh, get big. Trez was eating down low. Oh, let me see something, Trez. Come on, Trez, Harold, through the legs, two times. Going left. Oh, yeah. Six man of the year. What? He flexing like that. He can't do that on AD. But he flexing. Hold that mini. Hold that mini. So now with the Nuggets down 3-1, they were down 3-1 last series. They ended up coming back, winning three straight. But um, I don't think they'll be able to do that against the Clippers. Good pass. Good shot. Hold that three. Mm-hmm. Paulie. Paul George. It's lit. Gary Harris. He looking for something. That was a hard bucket to get. Nuggets never led in this game. This game was totally controlled by the Clippers. Good move, Kawhi. Clippers going to be looking to finish this in five. Oh, hold up, hold up, hold up. Run that one back because Tre I've been talking. I've been talking, talking. I've, I've seen at the corner of my eye. Hold up, Trez is banging, Trez is banging. Now now it's time to zoom in and give him the bird that he deserves. Ma Trez Harrell with like his third or fourth dunk in traffic, yamming on white skin. Ah, get out the way. And Grant caught some of that too. But Porter Jr. and Jokic got banged on. Hold that poster. Wet. That's bad defense. Bad defense. Oh, we got to add. Damn. Let's go over some numbers in the meantime. For the Clippers, Kawizi Manizi, Kawhi Leonard, 30 points, 10 of 22, shooting 45.5% from the field. That's what's up. 2 for 4 from the 3-point line, 50%, 8 for 8 from the free throw line. That's what's up. 11 rebounds. He had a double, double, 9 assists, almost had a triple, double, only one turnover. That's what's up. 4 steals, 2 blocks, plus 7, plus minus. Wow. Kawizi Manizi was a god this game. Jesus Christ. Oh, let me see that. What number we have? Okay, about there. Boom. Morris, 20, 11 points. That's what's up. Zubak. Excuse me, Zubak, 11 points, 9 rebounds. That's what's up, 2 blocks. Paulie, Paul George only had 10 points. But he didn't play a lot, only 26 minutes. He had 5 fouls, foul trouble. 4 for 10 shooting, 40%. 2 for 6 from the 3-point line, 33.3%. No free throws. No free throws, and that's shocking. Let me pull up Paul George's numbers because he's been getting to the hoop as of late. And I like how he's been using his body and getting to the hoop. The reason why I want to pull up his numbers is because, obviously, when you go to the hoop more, you are... Increasing your chances of getting more free throws, you feel me? Let me see his free throws as of late. I know he's been driving. He had three free throws the game of four, five the game of four, seven the game of four. Okay, not that much, but to go from seven to five to three to none, you got to get back to getting to the free throw line, man. Free throws is good. Free throws is free points. Kawhi Leonard's sixth game on. I want to read that. Sixth game this se this postseason with 30 plus points. That's what's up. That was pass. Jokic Mitty, hold up. Behind the back. Okay, I see you, Murray. A little too little too late. Down 12. They did make it like a nine-point game late. But, you know, you can't always save your best for the end. Sometimes you got to strike early. The way the Clippers did. Like I said, they never were behind this game. Good drop-off pass. It's always nice when you can draw in defenders, hit your big man for a two-handed flush. That's what's up. Shout out to the Clippers. They did what they're supposed to do. Get these Nuggets out the way, man. Up 3-1. Get them out the way. Stop playing. 
Get them out the way. You know what we all want to see. We all, every, if you're a basketball fan, you are fiending for Clippers, Lakers. I was just going over this. I was just going over this. I'm, hold on. I'm going to tell you after. Let me just look at these numbers. Lou Will, 12 points off the bench. He did shoot bricks, 3 for 11. It's not very good. Trez, 15 points in 18 minutes of action. That's what's up off the bench. I will say 41 rebounds for the Clippers, 38 rebounds for the Nuggets. Not a lot of rebounds by both teams. Not a lot of rebounds. What about the turnovers? Nine turnovers for the Clippers. That's what's up. 14 turnovers for the Nuggets. Mm. Let's see the Nuggets numbers. Grant, he didn't do much. Millsat didn't do much. Jamal Murray, he struggled because there's only two people to defend, really. Jamal Murray, 18 points, 6 of 15 shooting, 40% from the field. 2 for 3 from the three-point line, 66.7%, 4 for 4 from the free throw line. Four rebounds, seven assists, four turnovers, minus seven plus minus one steal. Mm. Not that impressive. He don't look like the guy that he was looking like in those last um not the in, in three out of the last four games against Utah. I believe that's games four, five, and six. Nicole Yokes, we went over his numbers. He had a double, double, six assists, too. That's what's up. Porter Jr., man. Porter Jr., 30, 30. Okay, now we went over his numbers. I'm going to go over his numbers again. 33 minutes for Porter Jr. off the bench, who was complaining about touches after the game. Again. Hold on, hold on. Let me pull up his um his face. Just for the people who don't know him, obviously, if you watch basketball, you know him. Because um he was going to be a number one pick. a top. He was going to be a top, top pick a few years ago, but he ended up dropping because he had an injury. He had a back injury. So, boom, Michael Porter Jr., man, he was definitely complaining about, about his coach. Hold on, let me see if it comes up in Google. They really going to overlook that? Michael Porter, they talking about the dunk. Okay, there we go. 36 minutes ago, clutch points. Clutch points, they always put up good stuff. Nuggets offense, too dependent on Nikola Jokic, Jamal Murray, per Michael Porter Jr. Yep, yep. And the ESPN posted it too. Where ESPN better post it. Y'all supposed to be the worldwide leader in sports. You better not, not, you know what I'm saying, miss stuff. Do not miss stuff if you ESPN, man. Porter, Porter oh, boom, check this out. Porter went on a bit of a post-game tirade, pretty much criticizing Nuggets head coach Mike Malone for not involving him enough in the offense. And I can't, I can't lie. I have to agree with him. Based off of me seeing the other players on the Clippers have trouble defending him. Simple as that. If I saw him get more burn and get more touches and he was whack and stinking it up, then no, you don't deserve more burn. But... Boom. This is his words, not mine. Hold on. Cancel this. Get out the way. Get out the way. Get, out, get off my screen. So, boom. Michael Porter Jr. on why he did not get shots in the second half. Quote, that's really up to the play call and the coaches. We kept going to Jokic and Jamal. They are amazing players, but we need to find ways to get others involved. End quote. Mm. Word. Word. Ha, ha, ha. Word. Yo, when I said that. I swear, because a lot of times, because this is my homework to watch the players talking after the game and stuff like that. A lot of times, get this off my screen. A lot of times, they say nothing, you know? And they're supposed to say nothing. They're supposed to keep everything on the hush, keep everything on the low, keep everything in the locker room. So when he said that, I was chilling. I was my eyes open. I was like, oh, he said what? I started looking. I started paying attention. I don't, sometimes I don't even be looking at them. I just keep the volume high. I was like, oh, snap, he's saying that. And then I was like, I hope they follow up with a follow-up question. And the follow-up question came. So here, MPJ, Michael Porter Jr., on the quiet second half. Quote, I didn't touch the ball. They didn't do anything different. End quote. Referring to the Clippers not doing much different in the second half as far as clamping them up, goon defense, nothing like that. Mm. Woo. Here's some more quotes from MPJ. Quote, if I'm going to be out there on the floor playing a lot of minutes, I think I should voice that opinion. End quote. This was in response to one of the reporters when they had basically asked, are you voicing your opinion? Like, how can you make sure something like this doesn't happen anymore? Are you going to be more assertive? Are, are you saying stuff? Or are you just going to be quiet and just let them take all the shots and basically lose? And then after the game be like, oh, Monday morning quarterback, you know, oh, you should have gave me the ball more. No. He said, nah, if he's going to get a lot of minutes, he's going to be saying stuff. Said a lot of calls were for Jokic slash Murray and understood why. But he said he felt other guys need to be included. Said he'd probably talk with coaches after tonight. See, here's where he messed up. Coming coming to us, the media, and talking about it. You feel me? That always looks bad. It always, no matter how you slice it, it always looks bad. When you're talking to the media, see, because he's a young player. He's going to learn this the hard way. 
When you talking to the media, finesse, lie. That's not your friend. They ain't waiting for you to say something like this, and then end up in a situation like this where we on YouTube just talking that talk. Oh my God, you saw what he said? He violated his coach. Da da da. Don't give people like myself ammunition. Just lie. Lie. Keep your mouth shut. When I was a fan before I started doing YouTube and all that stuff. I used to be like, damn, I wish the players were kept at 100. I wish the players were authentic. But with the growth of social media, I now see why players be lying to the media. And I totally get it. And now, in fact, I, I am a proponent for that. I want them to do that. Don't tell the media anything. But Porter Jr. was running his mouth. All right, this is another tweet. Asked Michael Malone, which is the coach for the Denver Nuggets, asked Michael Malone why MPJ only was able to get two shots off in the second half after he had 15 points in the first. So he was already cooking. Like I said, if you watch the series thus far, the Clippers haven't had any answer for Porter Jr. other than, well, the coach ain't going to really let him shoot a lot of shots. So let's just focus on Jamal Murray. Jokic is going to kill us here and there, but can Jokic beat us four times? Honestly, no. No, he can't. Jokic can get them a game or two or a game and a half, and Jokic will have a good box score because they don't have an answer for Jokic. He is a back down problem for them, but you do need a guy on the wing to cook, and if they're swarming Jamal Murray, who is smaller than Kawhi, who is smaller than George, and... um. Beverly is just accustomed to guarding anybody, any any size. You know, I do think they should switch it up. It just sucks because it's like, you're switching it up now when you're down 3-1. Why didn't you switch it up sooner? That's not exactly, all right, boom, and now I'm reading the rest of the article. That's not exactly a good look for Porter. I totally agree. It's not. It's not. You can't be out here talking trash about your coach. And he not directly doing it. He indirectly doing it. We're going to take what you're saying. We're not spinning it in no way, you know. We just taking what you're saying and putting two and two together. Oh, you're dubbing your coach. Oh, word. Word. That's what I, I swear to God, that's what I said. I said it just like Dave Chappelle. I was like, word. You said that. That's not exactly it. We understand the frustration on his end, both from a personal level and for his team. But criticizing your coach after a tough loss is never a good move. Exactly. You got to cuss that coach behind the scenes, bro. No, look, you don't got to cuss him. You got to let him know how you feel behind the scenes. And then on top of that, you got to let management know. You know what I'm saying? If you have any cachet, you got to let management know. But I don't think Porter Jr. has cachet because, remember, he's young. Then again, this could bear some fruit for Porter. And if Malone heeds his call, then he might just see an increase in his usage rate moving forward. Porter was outstanding, blah, blah, blah. In game three, 18 points, he had a double-double with 10 rebounds. He seemed to have been en route to yet another impressive performance in game four. But as he had said above, Denver just didn't go to him in the second half. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. T.A. Jenkins, let's finish this box score, see if there's anything else interesting on this box score. Does it seem like it? Man, you already know what it is. That's the two basketball games. I'm about to do a special football episode just for y'all because football is coming on. Not even tomorrow. It's 3 in the morning. So football will be on later tonight. You know what I'm saying? You already know what it is, T.A. Jenkins. T-E-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-